Happy February, my friend. It is Pat Sloan here, and we have The Secret Lives of Color today, block number eight, and it's a brand new chapter. Yes, we get into yellow. Okay, so first, let me just say that, you know, if you are just getting started with the Sew Along for The Secret Lives of Color, every uh, sort of chapter or section, I'm gonna call these sections, every section has a, then several chapters with a color devoted to the section color. So we're gonna be doing yellow in February. And I uh, had originally read you the beginning part. There's like a little section of yellow and I had read you that Oscar Wilde was arrested outside the uh, Cadogan, Cadogan Hotel <laughs> in London in April, 1895. The following day, the Westminster Gazette ran the headline, Arrest of Oscar Wilde, yellow book under his arm. So apparently yellow was used to signify a very risque book or a book that was sort of banned and they would put yellow covers on them, which just leads into so many things we're gonna learn about the color yellow. The first chapter in the section of yellow is on blondes. Do blondes really have more fun? I know those of you who are not blonde, which is most of us, <laughs> We'll say we have as much fun as the blondes do. So blonde is a color that uh, I found it very interesting to read that chapter because of course the hair color is touched on, but that's not the major thing at all. There's so many other things. And the author uh, does like to go way back in history. So I have found that fascinating because it's not something I personally would research on my own. So I love having it all sort of brought together. I decided to go uh, with the blonde color is kind of like the latest part of this plaid. So I'm just gonna use this plaid and I went ahead and picked a, the green to go with it. It is a low volume block, which is what I wanted. I didn't want a high contrast. I wanted to sort of come into this chapter with a low contrast. So they don't like from a distance it's sort of hard to see that plaid and this is the effect that I wanted you know that's how fabric works you can choose to make certain effects with your color choices and I find that immensely interesting and fascinating to do uh, so this is sort of a playground for me working with this I'm like okay what do I want to sort of play around with what kind of effect would I like to get now this will be paired with whoops this block and this block will end up being paired in for the uh, next to each other plus the next one which will be a three inch one. Also if you remember I did a bunch of sample blocks to show you the sizes when we first started and so I had done uh, the yellow in the, all three sizes just to see how it looks. So that means this month in February I get to use one of these and I definitely think I want to use the bigger one because the sunglasses are seen more. You know you don't really you know they're just peeking, or the glasses, they're just peeking out on the tiny one. So these two will go into my bags of uh, extra, extra blocks. So I will have to figure that out for this month. We're gonna, so the kickoff is great. The kickoff is for yellow. Now I wanna give you one other little thing about yellow. Um, it is my personal first favorite color. When I was a little girl, I wanted, I loved yellow. I loved yellow, which is kind of unusual because I guess at some point a lot of people dislike yellow. I don't know why, uh, but I loved it. And my, my mom said <clears throat> that she would paint my bedroom yellow. Well, that never did happen because we ended up, my dad took a job in Germany. And so, you know, the whole family was relocated to Germany and there we rented. So my mom couldn't paint my room yellow. Uh, fast forward a zillion years down the road uh, in this home here. I ended up eventually painting my upstairs hallway bright canary, bright yellow sunshine color, you know, like crayon color yellow. So I have enjoyed that for quite a few years now. Um, you know, someday we'll probably paint over it, but for now I really enjoy it. Next thing, next thing on our list is the Stronger Together Sew Along, which is for uh, the United Negro College Fund. It is a fundraiser uh, being hosted by the Fat Quarter Shop in Cherise, Spain, uh, who is a designer and she designed the pattern. I bought the kit because that's just more fun. I wanted to, I wanted to do the quilt just as she designed it. 
So let's see, there's two kit colors and I bought the more pastel version because of it being coming into spring and it felt very springy for me. So here is the pattern and you can, it's, it's free to download it, but then we would like you to do a donation. So all that information is in the description box below here. Uh, and also the first comment should have it or hopefully. Okay. I am doing this version. So let's take a look at the fabric and we are starting out with the sort of lantern blocks. See these, these sort of lantern pieces? And the the uh, story is all sort of, the, the quilt was also sort of inspired by inventor Garrett Morgan. And he was a very passionate problem solver. And one of the things that, you know, he did was invent the zigzag stitch, which is for Sherry, she incorporated the zigzag, which is the middle block here. All right, so I will be using the background from the kit and then this fabric and I think there's two other peach fabrics. I think both of these. So yeah, so this is this one and then here is the middle. So that is how the very light colorway is working. Though so I really think it's gorgeous. It's so f uh, soft and pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the lantern block up. Uh, although I'm sure the Fat Quarter Shop, uh, you can, you know, their directions are very good. This is not a difficult block, you know, so I will get one of mine here done. And then during this week, I will sew up the others. Cutting out all the lantern style blocks. I have them here layered because you're doing two of these and one of this one, which is the center. And then there's these long strips that go on the bottom of either one. Now, the one thing I wanted to note is that if you are new to working with art gallery fabrics, if you bought the kit or you bought some other art gallery fabrics, you'll notice that it feels different. It is 100% cotton. You can go to the art gallery um, website and they have a little uh, FAQ, the fact area that tells you about their base goods. These are called gray goods. It's the base that they put all their fabrics on. Every company has their own base. They just use one that's a little bit different. Uh, I also, because I've been, let me grab this, because I've been sewing so much, I am putting a new needle in my machine to start with this. This weave of their base fabric for Art Gallery is a little bit tighter, and I know that my needle needs changed. It needed change when I was doing something else the other yesterday, and I was like, I need to change the needle, so definitely gonna change that and be ready to sew up the blocks. <laughs> I have one block done. Here we go. It is so gorgeous. I really hope you enjoy making this and sewing along with me and supporting uh, the fundraiser. <sighs> Got one done. Now, as I was sewing this, I was uh, starting the next one and I will just sit down. These are really easy. So I'll be able to get all the, the rest of the three of them done and probably today. So I'll do that. And I do have a little mail call and then we're gonna talk about what's on my design wall and another finish. So first the mail call is I had a beautiful card from Renee in Tennessee. Look how pretty that is. And then she sent me some fabric, a piece of fabric with a nice big piece of it with the edging on. So isn't that gorgeous? The dogwoods. <gasps> I do not have a dogwood in my yard. There are lots of them in my neighborhood and my dad and his wife have uh, some in their yard, but I just think I need to have one someday. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So I have another mail call, which was a mail call I made for myself. <laughs> this is what I got for me. <laughs> so, so one of my friends over on Instagram shared this company called Leckerli, which makes really traditional German Liebkuchen cookies. And they, uh, the Sandy, that is the founder of this company 10 years ago, 11 years ago, whatever it was, she decided she really wanted to make the very traditional high end version of these cookies, which have a lot of almond content. And they're like a spicy gingerbread flavor. And they come in these gorgeous tins. So the company was doing 
uh, in January a sale of the empty tins. Well, I didn't know about the company. This is the first. I'd only recently had the cookies again uh, and had forgotten about them from living in Germany. So, of course, I had to order some tins with cookies and I had to order some of the empty tins that they were selling because the tins are so cool. So I'm going to put a picture up here, but I'll just show you. Uh, some of the tins. So they come in two sizes. The bigger one has a, like a cookie the size of this, which I'll show you. I'll open that. But the little ones then have some smaller versions of the cookies. And I just love the artwork on these. Every year they put out a new tin. So look at the town. This is Kaisberg. Kaiserberg. Ah, there's, oh, that's, no, they're all different towns. There's three different towns. So from, you know, like probably where the Christmas marts are. And this is the size, uh, it's a cover on it. And then there's the size of the big cookies. See, they're like the same size as the, as big as this container, which apparently I was reading her history that that's a common size for them. I also got these two tins and this one has the owl. Look at that. And this one had the smaller, I got the smaller cookies. These can freeze, which is good because I got way a lot of cookies. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but they're um, fairly, you can tell I'm eating those. <laughs> they're fairly um, heavy cookies. They're sort of not a light cookie. Um, well, I usually eat like a half of the small one at a time. <laughs> Probably more than you want to know. So my other mail call to myself was the Homesick Texan Cookbook. I knew that she had a cookbook. I have followed the Homesick Texan uh, blog for many, many years. But somehow uh, I was reading something and it mentioned her cookbook again. I thought, dang, I never did buy her cookbook. I'm going to go get that. Uh, it is huge. Look at this. But it's so nice. I love Tex-Mex food. I love Mexican food. I love, you know, Southwest food. I just love all of that stuff. And she talks about her own personal, like, cooking uh, and her family cooking. So it's kind of neat. It's got some backstory and some uh, history in it that is really fun to read. All right. Ta-da, ta-da. I decided to put up the uh, triangles. Remember I showed you on Saturday, I think, that I had them uh, made. So I got them all pressed open and I laid them out. So pretty much... They look random, but they're actually quite structured. There's a purple on each of the centers. And then I did like the same fabrics that went with it. Corners, they're kind of the same, if not the identical. Yeah, these two have identical fabrics. They, I did that. And these two have identical fabrics. And even though it's a small piece, so try to make a small piece scrappy is a little um, more difficult. Plus, you know, all of these were the cutaways. No, no, these weren't. I'm sorry. These were not the cutaways. These were the ones I had to make new. Uh, and I didn't, and you only may, need to make so many. So I'm really happy with that layout. Then I took the cutaways. I have enough to make two big stars and I have, because I'm using a layer cake for this, I have extra layer cake fabric. <clears throat> and then I have enough to do four small stars. So I'm thinking the small stars might make a pillow. Um, you know, so they might, four of them together, I think will be the size of a pillow. The big stars, I'm not really sure since there's only two of them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll make big stars or I could do a little table runner and then just take these as like a border, you know, like this. So they could just be like, I could just do fabric, like strips of fabric that's left over from this layer cake and then just put these on either side of the top and bottom of it and just make a little decoration like that. So I'm leaning towards that for the big one because I don't know what to do with this two stars. I'm thinking, well, maybe I'd like to have a little table runner. Okay, so you have to stay tuned for that and what I end up doing because I'm not really sure where that's going. <laughs> I just started messing around. But definitely I think the, f the four tiny stars will be a cute pillow. I think that that will be super cute. Now I do have the squares done for here, so I'll get those up. And this is a February 1st video, but I finished this in January. So even though it's now February and I counted and I had it on my February list, I got this done on Sunday, Sunday night, because everything was ready. I finally said, okay, I'm going to sit down and get it done. And so here is the fall frolic with binding on it. 
and I went with that black and white sort of ticking binding that I showed you the other day uh, and I will link to you and this has my Harmony wide back in the sort of foresty green color which goes so nice with this this fabric now I am thinking of giving this one to my niece instead of the other one I thought of giving her because I haven't actually sent that stuff yet because I'm trying to gather some family pictures to send along as well with the package and that that hasn't happened yet. So I uh, need to get all that organized. But I'm thinking I'll give her that one because she really likes those fall colors. And now that it's done, I can. <laughs> okay, my friend, for February 1st, you have the Secret Lives of Color. Do your block for today. I did a six inch block. Uh, and then uh, the next color, I will do a three inch block because I'm doing 963, 963 across each row. Basically, I'm taking each row as a unit. So you'll find in, there's several that don't, that have a different structure when you look at the layout pattern, but that's my process. And then Stronger Together, I am getting all of the first week's blocks made. So this is one and I will sew up the others. All right, I hope you have a super good day. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed uh, seeing my video, click the thumbs up, click the subscribe so we can be friends. And I love you, Mwah. see you online.